That's disputable, Dad. That's disputable. That's disputable. Well, that's disputable. Disputable. Before we get started, I wanted to show you all the thumbnail for this video. The channel chose the smug bitch's face to be the first thing people see when deciding if they want to seek the truth or not. You will soon see it perfectly sets the tone for their documentary. Here we go folks, another Flat Earth documentary. Flat Earthers sure love to cover themselves with a veneer of respectability. Let's see how that works out for them. Document everything. Some people, life is about, I get a BMW, I go on a holiday, go to the disco, have a drink, take some drugs, that's life. That's not enough for people like me. My man! I'm curious, why am I alive? Where am I? What am I here for? Where, what exactly went on before? That seems reasonable. Why am I being lied to when I am in a pursuit of something? But I, I, I want that foundation. And then when I'm, when I'm in pursuit of it, I'm just seeing people standing in the way. Why do they stand in my way? Why do they, why do they mock and ridicule and abuse? I'm asking questions. I'm asking questions. And if you have a claim that you're putting to me, just show me. I look forward to learning more about this poor man's struggle to learn the truth. The years and years of deep study that went into his revelations. I mean, he gave up drugs and disco to learn the truth. This has to be, pun intended, earth shattering in scale. There's no need to condescend to me and browbeat to me and pull your PhD out of your pocket and- I've got a degree in homeopathic medicine! You've got a degree in baloney. <laughs> <laughs> suggest that you can assess the world better than I can. That's the funny part about being educated in something. It means you know it better. I'm sure you would want your mechanic to have knowledge in how to repair your car before you attempted to repair it. He would probably get this knowledge through training and education. I've got a video here and um, it's, it's proof of um, one of the NASA's actonauts on harnesses. Grabs the strings, pulls them over. Straightens out. Right, so basically that, that there is showing you that, that he's on a harness, yeah? And what people have done, right, mm. is made up an excuse, yeah? Mm. They're saying, of course they need harnesses and all the pressure and stress in space. So if they need harnesses, why are they sh making, the, why, making the wires invisible? Do you know what I mean? People will make excuses up to protect their belief. No one says that the ISS astronauts need harnesses for protection while inside the ISS. No one says that. It's almost like you're... Will make excuses up to protect their belief. Sometimes people hold a core belief that is very strong. When they are presented with evidence that works against that belief, the new evidence cannot be accepted. It would create a feeling that is extremely uncomfortable called cognitive dissonance because they still want to cling on to their world view and they don't want to break that world view. Huh. Irony! And what we had to do is we had to break our world view because we didn't wake up one day and say, oh, I think today's a good day to decide that the Earth's flat. Yeah, I'll decide that I could offend my family and friends. Some people have been completely dis disassociated with the family and friends. I'm going to lose, get get ridiculed, and and that, oh, that sounds like Just a pretty off. good <laughs> idea. This is what I'm I'm going to do today. Not only have we had to find this stuff out, we've a core philosophy within all flat earthers is a strong victim complex. Every one of their testimonials starts out with a reminder that they are ridiculed and browbeaten by their friends and families, and their lives are a lot harder now that they think the world is flat. As if their shitty life choice is somehow positive evidence of their beliefs. Find this stuff out, we've then had to go back, research the heliocentric model, model which is the globe model, so that we can prove to ourselves that what we've presented with now makes sense. And we can see that what they've presented doesn't make sense. Alright, you say you studied the globe model. 
Let's see how much you know. Where did you do this studying? How long did you spend studying? What text did you use? Who did you talk to? These are all important questions to ask. After doing probably about 10,000, roughly 10,000 hours worth of research over the last 10 years into all things conspiratorial, I found out that not only is the Earth flat, but everything they tell us is a lie. Everything of matter. Wow. 10,000 hours of research in the past 10 years. That's almost 20% of his waking life spent in research. That is almost enough time spent in research to be an expert chef. This guy could have been the next Gordon Ramsay. Instead he became an expert at online conspiracies. But hey man, whatever works for you. But how you can become an expert and the benefits that go along with it. Of course it makes perfect sense, it's flat. Have you ever walked around a ball and not fallen off? That's not gonna happen, Rick! Nobody has and nobody ever will. So you're just gonna have to trust them, aren't you? Unless you can build a ball as big as the Earth to walk around, which you're never gonna be able to, so you're just gonna have to trust them. Unless you can invent a time machine to go back all those hundreds of millions of years so we can see those monkeys turning into men all over the world all at the same time, you're just gonna have to trust them, aren't you? That is a sentence from a flat earther who apparently dedicated 10,000 hours of his life to research. Let's listen one more time, shall we? To go back all those hundreds of millions of years, so we can see those monkeys turning into men all over the world, all at the same time. Oh, I can't believe it! This is simply embarrassing! These people who call themselves flat earthers are obsessed running around thinking they've got to prove the Earth's flat. They've got to prove it with lasers and theodolites and all this kind of carry on. Well, if you think the Earth's flat, then explain this, explain that, you know. And they're constantly confused and running around thinking they have to prove something when they've missed the fact that the burden of proof is on the claim. So if your claim is that the Earth is flat, wouldn't you have the burden of proof to show that the Earth is flat? Are you trying to make the argument that flat earthers automatically win somehow? Because reasons? You don't have to prove that you doubt or why you doubt. You, you know, you don't have to come up with the alternative. If you tell me I am wrong about the shape of the earth, I would like to know why. That's how a debate or a discussion or any conversation works. You don't just get to claim victory because you want it. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. The globe is actually the reality denial because you're claiming something that you can't, you can't test, observe and repeat for yourself. You can't demonstrate it, scale it, model it. You can't provide me with the substance. You can't prove it. Keep in mind, there is no universally accepted flat earth model. The closest thing they have is a map that no one agrees on and is highly inaccurate for both distance and scale. Any and all of his questions have answers if he goes out and looks for them. They, they, people like to think that it's all been worked out and all I need to do is find the right authority, or find the right section of their book, and that will be it. Problem solved. What we've got here is failure to communicate. It's not that the answers to your questions are not out there. It's that you refuse to accept them. It would create a feeling that is extremely comfortable called cognitive dissonance. It would be fascinating to go back and learn more of the globe because you'll find so many people don't know the stuff about the globe like I didn't, like Tom didn't as well prior. But we know, and then they'll still be completely arguing with you saying, well, no, it's not, it's this, it's gravity and this and the other. And you're like, well... We've now researched that and we know and we know more about the globe model now than they people <laughs> believe in the globe. Hold up. To go back all those hundreds of millions of years so we can see those monkeys turning into men all over the world all at the same time. 10,000 hours of research has brought them to this point. It's over 9,000! What 9,000? i found that the people who seem to be understand the flat earth model and have come on board and all the other lies as well tend to have come from uh, backgrounds of where we've gone through hardships or abuse and um, so it's broken us this system what we've been created hasn't has broken us in some way that's one of the many benefits of hashtag globe privilege nothing bad happens to any of us ever Fuck the when I was a child, before I realised all the lies of the world, 
I was not a rebel at all. I, I liked the thought of the police and the, the law and order. I loved all that by any means. But I had an encounter with God when I was like about 13 or 14 that proved to me beyond any doubt that there's a spirit realm. The present, I, was, I walked straight into the presence of God and it was, it was tangibly shaking the air. It was shaking with, with his presence. It was every bit as tangible as this concrete slab I'm sat on. And so I knew that there was something outside of this flesh and blood. I don't know what I'm supposed to take away from this message here. Is it that God is made of concrete? Is that the message? Should we be attempting to sit on God? What does this have to do with the flat earth? Jesus Christ! What? Get the Escalade, we're out of here. We see people addicted to their iPhones walking around town with, in a 3D universe, but they're just, it's as though they're addicted to a pixel on a screen. And people's minds now are starting to dissolve into this technology, which was all planned by these people at Real Things. Ooh la la, someone's gonna get laid in college. In order to realize that the world's a lie, you don't even need a single conspiracy theory. All you need is what these people will actually admit to. What they admit to is incredible. I mean, the pharmaceutical giants have paid out billions of pounds in lawsuits, they admit to that. You don't pay billions of pounds out unless you're killing people. Ah, the classic. Earth is flat because evil large corporation. Always a good fallback. Glad you're putting that 10,000 hours of expertise to good use. That's, odd. That's how wealthy people laugh. I wouldn't have guessed. Oh! <laughs> They're, gas, they're gaslit in a sense that, my, as my grandparents were, that you know, it's perhaps your fault that your child is now brain damaged, or perhaps there's something wrong with your genetics or your family's genetics. And really, it was a, it was the toxicity in the vaccine that did it. So, you know, you see that and you you think they never had the truth. The people who the people who are responsible for this have never been held accountable. It's interesting to me. That in this Flat Earth documentary, the first half of it is spent not talking about the Flat Earth. Instead, they seem to spend the majority of their time trying to make you feel pity for these people's lives. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. 